Here. Rux. Here. Mayor Leibson. Here. Let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we need a motion to approve last week's minutes. So moved. So moved. Motion, uh, Slade Hanson, second by Olson. If there are no changes, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries for open forum tonight. We are pleased to have Mr. Williams with us for an update <laughs> on Northwestern's future plans. Mike, you have the floor. Yeah, I've been playing hooky. It's hard to hide that you've got to get a sneak out of Aberdeen for a week last week. <laughs> Nice tan, though, Mike. My golf game didn't at all. I nailed three shots last week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 One that comes over from Groton, uh, Groton Wapa substation, and then another one that comes up from uh, the Huron Wapa substation. <laughs> Our power plants within the region all feed into these uh, 115 lines, and, uh, and then we tap from, from those sources. Uh, at one point in my tenure in Aberdeen, I, I was reassured Mr. Leibson that we still had one 115 line. We had some troubles over in the the Jim River area and we had uh, trouble on the Ellendale line and I reassured Mike that there won't be a problem that uh, we still have one good solid feed and that next morning we had no lights in Aberdeen but uh, everything we've been doing is uh, um, we've rebuilt a few of those sections and, and whatnot but uh, the technology has changed now that uh, we can really provide a, a without going into the engineering side of it we can provide a pretty solid system where you can even wonder if the lights even blinked uh, with these transmission lines and years ago that would be a solid down for a while and, and whatnot and with these uh, multiple feed lines coming in and the the new uh, devices that we put in there it's uh, it's going to be great for capacity for uh, flexibility and and uh, we like to you know, say that it's for future load growth um, we recently were able to uh, procure the feeding of the new AGP plant uh, north of town. And just to give you an idea of equivalence, that's like serving, oh, probably 420 homes of electricity, a pretty good solid load to our area. So um, having a good electric base load or good system on hand is really good for economic development. And when we put together what we're uh, designing for Aberdeen, it's the best electric design system on any of our communities we serve. And that's all of the large ones in Montana as well as South Dakota. It's some of the first that we're uh, throwing this expenditure into. Um, to actually complete this loop, we needed another transmission system tying two of our key substations together. We do have a uh, substation over in the industrial park area just south of Twin City Fans. And we have another one that feeds off that uh, 115 line over behind, kind of just north of the White House in, uh, behind the old uh, roundhouse rail yard. And we needed to tie those together. And when we started looking at opportunities, how to get from point A to point B, there wasn't a whole lot of options. Everything we did uh, encumbered some challenges and we wanted to minimize those challenges with uh, the residents in Aberdeen. We did come up with an opportunity looking at this route and I know uh, uh, last year I met with uh, council member uh, Robin Mark and talked, I, th I believe it was uh, going to land on, you know, possibly more of their constituents just to let them know what we were looking at and uh, the <coughs> As, as we kept looking at it, it turned into probably our best opportunity with uh, um, as minimal impact as possible. There are uh, a few uh, uh, trees in this residential area, just very few. A couple of them we're uh, concerned with and we've worked with those customers. We're gonna uh, do some removal there and some replacement. Um, but uh, 
obviously we had drought concerns. Our construction is slated for this April through September and we will be bringing in a contract crew uh, a little with all the other projects in the area it's a little bit bigger than our local crews could dive into and complete so uh, i guess with that uh, um, probably hit as much as i wanted to hit but i certainly wanted to know if there was any questions obviously there's going to be some uh, concerns i think we'll make sure we get a good article out in the newspaper prior to that contract crew starting and and just uh, get some ideas out there and we'll certainly in that article uh, invite any concerns to come Northwestern Energy's direction but they, they'll probably come your direction also so Lynn do you have a subcontractor doing the work as to, so we know the name of the subcontractor yeah and I'll, I will provide that soon uh, yeah, the bid letting is done and I believe there's there's actually a contractor out of Nebraska that uh, has been up here in the past and worked quite a bit and they uh, they seem to be very interested in this the area once again we haven't seen them in this area in a couple of years but uh, well it's not like they're probably going to be uh, the RFP is out uh, we should be able to get that information back within the month here so so Mike what ultimately what is this going to do for us for Aberdeen, if I was to take a look at our our growth recently, if I just looked at the last 10 years growth, what we complete here is going to set Aberdeen up for that same growth pattern for about 35 to 40 years without doing anything else. Our substation work we've completed, uh, and it all comes with some uh, substantial costs. I would say that uh, industrial park substation we put 3.5 million in last year. That city sub over here we did about a five million dollar expansion not long ago. This uh, comes at 3.5 million just to build this line through here. So obviously the the city will benefit from you know just the infrastructure and the the tax that would come with that. But I think the better uh, thing to look at is reliability and uh, potential growth, I guess, to be able to handle any growth thrown at us. So you're going down First Avenue? Yeah, First, North Avenue. <laughs> First Avenue Northeast. Uh, obviously concerns between probably Klein and State in that area. And, and beyond that, you know, we get into some uh, commercial that already has lines. If um, good example would be that line that goes down Roosevelt. If you can picture the line that goes all the way down Roosevelt from Milwaukee all the way down to the high school, that's what we're putting in. So if you can't picture it, that's a good thing because <laughs> after a while it, it's, it just kind of becomes part of the community and blends in and it's just one of those things. We can bury power lines up to 69,000 volts, but once you get into this uh, 115,000 volt line, it just becomes not even economically unfeasible it just isn't feasible so what side of the road are you are you putting these on uh this would end up being on the south side okay first all the way down and then a bit of a challenge going over the, the uh, overpass down there but it you know it's all been all surveyed and engineered out and, and then uh, drop in across the rails property which was a challenge in itself <laughs> more so than the, like, the city would ever be able to throw at us working with the bn is interesting <laughs> oh we know yeah. they're like their own nation there yeah other questions are you ready for uh, an ice storm and 45 oh, mile an hour wind yeah, that's the that's the three letter word that we don't say <laughs> hopefully we just get snow snow and wind Wind conditions without the uh, leaves on the trees, really, we've got a great history of that not bothering us. You know, if we end up with that spring snow where you get the heavy heavy snow load and wind, then a bigger challenge if there's some leaves out there. But we had the, the one occasion uh, 13, 14 years ago when it was, when it was just ice buildup yes. and uh, lines collapsed all over and we're better prepared for that. There were some cities that were... You know, we, yeah. we were very fortunate that ice kind of went from Webster on down through our service territory and here on. And yeah, we had a lot of small yeah. towns that were out for seven days or so and had that come into our area here would have yeah. been a big challenge. Yeah. But 
Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, next on our agenda, our consent calendar, routine uh, city business <laughs> items A, B, and C. Move approval. Second. Motion Ruck, second by Lunsman. Questions on any of the three? All in favor of passing all three, then say aye. 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 And oppose no. Motion carries. Under new business uh, presented tonight uh, from our city attorney, ordinance 190301, <coughs> declaring the Emerald Ash Bore a public nuisance. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members of the council, I had visited last week uh, in general about the proposed uh, ordinance change to accommodate and uh, be proactive for the eventual uh, confirmation of Emerald Ash Borer in the city. Um, just so the council is aware, uh, Wednesday of last week we did mail out a letter to the various tree services and uh, some, of the, some of the tree care services within the area. Uh, to give them an opportunity to look at it and comment. And I don't know if anyone is here uh, and would like to uh, uh, potentially comment, so I'll just let the, let the council know that, that a letter did go out. And uh, the actual specifics of the, of the uh, ordinance uh, deal with a, a few things. Number one is, is including within the definitions uh, a, a, a specific language regarding the Emerald Ash Borer and also describing for purposes of, of licensing process what treat or treatment of a, of a tree means and what tree maintenance means. And then in uh, uh, the section two of the ordinance uh, starts to talk about uh, uh, the nuisance declaration and, and I think it's helpful if I allow next week when, I, when we put this back on the agenda, I will put a clean copy of the ordinance, what it would look like as proposed. I think it's just a little easier to read. But um, Dr. Ball, who did not, was not able to be here last year, he's the, uh, I think the state, uh, state arborist, I don't know what his, his so title is. Okay. But he actually helped us clean up some of the language regarding even the, the elm tree stuff. So you'll see that we even changed some of that in item section, subsection one of 56-33. Uh, we did add in uh, then, of course, the ash tree uh, genus Fraxinus, I believe. Uh, we've cleaned up some of the subsequent uh, sections to incorporate ash tree. Uh, I did want to also just point out something quickly to the, to the council at section 56-35. Uh, just a slight change in there uh, where it talks about the authority of uh, our city forester typically to enter onto private property. Uh, we did make it clear that we're just talking about the yard areas of private property. Obviously, we're not going to allow them in within uh, uh, enclosures. Right. Uh, so, also then, as we as we go on down uh, in what would be Article Two of the of the uh, existing ordinance, we see some additional changes, all incorporating uh, the ash trees, and then <coughs> we start seeing some new stuff at 56-42. And that is uh, essentially uh, putting in place uh, the quarantine, which is the, the requirement that any wood that is removed and, and is uh, needing to be disposed of would have to be disposed of at waste collection sites designated by the forester. And we're already working, I understand, with the county uh, to establish that. So that, that will be uh, posted and available for, for the residents as part of a, also as part of an education uh, initiative that will be posted on the website. 56-43 uh, addresses the flight season of the of the emerald ash borer and will prohibit any uh, transportation removal trimming f between the months of May 1 and September 1st. So that's a that's a large window but that's that's where you're doing as much damage as good by removing the the tree if not a lot more damage by allowing the uh, emerald ash borer to uh, further spread. And then Article 5 is the licensing requirement. We're, we're establishing a licensing for both the arborist, which we describe as the tree trimmers, tree removers, and then a tree applicator is, is someone who is licensed and has the ability to chemically treat, typically chemically treat trees. And that was that uh, process that uh, Aaron Keyes had talked about last week about the cost of that. And so we've established a licensing process. Uh, many of these provisions um, are taken from other areas in our code where we have licensing requirements. 
Um, and then we've set up an appeal process in the event that that license is not the, not granted. The one change we've made is that we're just allowing the city forester uh, upon uh, passage of his exam and just meeting these requirements, he can just immediately issue a, a, a license as opposed to typically we come to the council. And then lastly, and quite important, I believe, is a, is a delayed enforcement for uh, the amendments to Chapter 56. And the first will be uh, the, the actual quarantine, the declaration and confirmation of uh, EAB will be delayed until we get certified laboratory analysis. Um, we do expect, unfortunately, that that's not going to be that long. And when that happens, our forester will place in the legal newspaper a notice of confirmation of the Emerald dashboard. And at that point, our residents will be notified that 15 days after that, we will start enforcing. And then uh, the actual licensing uh, will be delayed, uh, whichever occurs earlier of the confirmation of EAB within the city or January 1st, 2020. But we thought this would give all of um, our tree removers and applicators uh, this calendar year to complete their work, to uh, schedule and plan and, and, uh, and read up on what they need to do to uh, get licensed beginning next year. With, uh, with, with this already happening in Sioux Falls, do they have a similar ordinance to this to they, they that, that's in effect in action already and it's gone, worked well for them to this point? Or? Very, yeah, it'd be very similar <clears throat> to what we're proposing. Yeah. In fact, Dr. Yeah. Ball, um, who Aaron has been consulting with during this process, he recommended strongly that we look and utilize as much as we can of Sioux Falls' mm -hmm. procedures. Yeah. Questions, anybody? Hi. So a couple, couple things here. Um, prohibited period, which I believe would uh, have a significant impact on our tree removal services. Mm -hmm. Um, and with um, the ash being probably one of the more popular trees in the community, that's that's a significant uh, hit to their their business. Um, so, are are there any other ways to treat this without having a pro prohibited period? I mean, so, let me ask, one of the things I'm thinking about. We we do have. Um, um, in this community, oh, I just lost it. Um, what are, what's termites? Mm -hmm. Termites, and I'm not sure that anyone abides by, you know, removing of bad wood. And where does that wood go to? I mean, we we have that issue in Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering <clears throat> how we might be able to help our tree removal people um, with, and still accomplish the same goals? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, this is a standard, um, this is a standard regulation that most communities are, are uh, using that are within, you know, the first couple of years of EAB identification. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's basically to help with that death curve that I talked about mm -hmm. last time and the fact that if we're letting people move around Ashwood uh, in those first few years, uh, during the, f the flight period, <clears throat> we're going to move that, we're going to move Emerald Ash Borer everywhere all at once. And that includes, the, you know, countywide as well. If, if, the, if the quarantine is just Brown County, which I'm not sure what the feds will quarantine, but I'm guessing it'll be the entire county. Uh, if we don't put some sort of restriction on when that ash or when that wood can be cut and moved, uh, the problem is, is we're going to spread it everywhere very quickly. And so we're the, it's this, the from uh, May 1st to September 1st isn't something I came up with. This is what is uh, being used nationwide for communities that are, are trying to slow the spread once it's found. So is there, um, after a period of time, the first three, five years, you think that that can be oh, yeah. reduced? Def that I think it'll definitely be reduced because once it's found, you know, throughout your whole community or throughout the county, then it's not as, you know, we're not as, uh, it, it's not as urgent to try and, you know, reduce the amount of wood that's moved around. So 
Yeah, okay. I think or in time that that could be changed. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Um, licensing. <clears throat> what um, What are you expecting of of uh, the the owner of a tree removal service to know? For the ar- exam? arbonist, yeah. Uh, it's going to be. A, it's a. I've I've got the exam. You know, ninety nine percent complete. You know, not to say that we couldn't change a question here or there. It's it's ba- it's a twenty point question. Uh, the the questions are very simple. You know, if you know, you know what a tree is, and uh, <laughs> you know, this is not going to be something you need to buy materials and study for. This is to make sure that you know a, a few of the the ordinances that we have uh, that deal with boulevard trees or private trees, that you know how to make proper. Uh, cuts to remove a tree that safely uh, if you know you know some of your safety gear that is required uh, by OSHA it's it's going to be a fairly simple test we just okay. want to make sure that uh, everybody uh, wanting this license knows the very basic knowledge of okay. tree removal or applicating so I'd like to see that when you have it done sure um, you know there there are tree removal services that have a lot of history here Mm -hmm. and they have uh, a lot of working knowledge and so um, I would hate to see that uh, we wouldn't work with those individuals. Um, Yeah this is the the test isn't meant to exclude anybody I mean if you don't pass it the first time you're going to have you're going to you're going to pass it it's not going to be something that you're not going to pass and not be able to work in Aberdeen. So. Okay. Mark? Alvin, did you get your question answered here by this discussion today? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Anything? Oh, fine. Um, as far as a tree applicator license, what requirements are you looking for? Not the arborist license but the applicator the applicators well, i mean the, the biggest thing is that you can show us proof that because you have to have a state you have to be licensed through the state to apply chemicals commercially so the biggest thing is that you can show us that you're licensed uh, through the state because you you need that you can't just get licensed through aberdeen and go apply commercial chemicals you have to first go through the state so that's gonna be the probably the biggest item that we require okay yeah. Anything else, anyone? Uh, if not, I'd uh, entertain a uh, motion, I guess, for uh, first reading, uh, passage of first reading of the ordinance. So moved. Second. second. Motion, Ronane, second by Slade Hansen. Any other questions on the motion? Carl, please. Councilmember Remley. Aye. Ronane. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Slade Hansen. Aye. Bunsness. Aye. Olson. Aye. Rux. Aye. Mayor Leibson. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, the uh, next item is, uh, this is the appointed time for a public hearing on the adoption of the Aberdeen Growth Plan. I presume there is nobody here to speak to it as part of the uh, public option. Uh, the second part of this would be a uh, resolution approving it. So, Brett, give us a little background, please. Well, after two years of data collection and <coughs> public input and numerous public and community meetings, we're finally at the point where we can adopt a comprehensive plan. Um, it is, uh, in, in my opinion, it, it's uh, well thought out. Um, our consultant did a very good job of, of not only listening to staff, but listening to the public to make sure everybody's concerns are met, to make sure that our, our growth potential <laughs> is going to be there through 2045. Um, I, I think it's going to be a very good uh, working document for us, and I, and I, I key on the w- in on the word working. This is a living, breathing document. There's going to be times when we look at it, we've either outgrown it, we need to amend it, or we're growing in a different direction, we need to amend it that way. But it's mm-hmm. going to be something that's going to be, I think, very helpful as we continue to grow. Was, it, was uh, the, the process or the product of this uh, different, uh, significantly different than the last one? Yes, yes, it was. How so? It, 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 the consultant listened to staff and the public a little more, I think, than what we had on the last one 14 years ago. I think this one is, is a, a better document than what we had. It's more realistic 
than the previous one we had. So like I say, I, I think it's going to be a, a good a good thing for the city. Was that because the consultant was more of a local consultant? Than the- I, I think cause it had more of a local flavor, but and, and, and I, I think the consultant seemed to be more in tuned with a community our size. Mm-hmm. Were you going to make a comment? I was just going to, um, as you have before you a, a copy of the proposed resolution for this, and we just want to make it clear that this comprehensive plan includes uh, a major street plan. That's part of the language used by the by the statute. And also that the council is adopting the comprehensive plan in its entirety. So that you can uh, pick and choose. And you heard, recall when the Stantec folks were here, they were saying that you can choose to uh, re- take pieces of it if you choose. But we we're asking that uh, you approve the entirety of the plan. So be a comprehensive adoption. Comprehensive. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I would uh, then entertain a motion uh, to uh, adopt the resolution Moved. to approve this. Second. Motion. David, you first. Yep. Uh, Busness and second by Olson. Yeah, I, just, I think it's important to, uh, and Brent, you, you can chime in here, to mention that the planning team was made up of uh, a Brown County resident only, uh, Brown County Planning Commission individual. So the county was... Um, very much involved in this process if they wanted to be, if they wanted to be, okay? I think that's an important piece. Um, Brett, just to confirm, if someone wants to go out and read the plan, EvergreenGrowthPlan.com is, is where they can find that, right? That is correct. And it, it's, it's currently labeled as the draft. We're going to get that changed once okay. it's been adopted. So it'll actually so be after the it, plan. After tonight, yep. what they see there will be. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions about this? If not, we have a motion and a uh, second uh, to adopt uh, this plan for the city. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. And if I could, um, as a result of the approval of the resolution, um, there will be a summary of the action that will be prepared by Carl, of all people, by the finance officer. (laughs) (laughs) And published. So there will be some follow-up action to this, but uh, <laughs> this was the major action that we needed today. So thank okay. you. Uh, item C under new business. This is the appointed time for a hearing on a, a one-day uh, uh, on-sale liquor license for the Downtown Association's uh, event uh, on March the 16th. And uh, nobody here to oppose that, so we need a motion to approve. Move. Second. Motion Remley, second by Lundsman. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Clint, did you, were you going to make a comment? No, or? just, a, it's called a pub crawl, but with all the snow, I don't think anyone will be crawling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sliding. Uh, the next item, item D, uh, Robin, a uh, recommendation for street maintenance concrete repair. Uh, we had three bids for this particular project. This particular one will do the area that we will be doing the seal coating in for this year. And the intent behind this is to make sure that this work is done in a timely manner for our street crews to be able to complete their seal coating, patching, and sealing for that area. So this will concentrate on that area. We will have another contract that will get us into next year's seal coat so we can get a jump start on that and not make this process so difficult to get through in the short spring, especially, you know, you take a look at the weather. We're probably not going to get an April 1 start this year on concrete. So um, the quicker we can get this done, the better off we are for the street department. So our low bid was um, CWF Masonry uh, in the amount of $220,535. They were well below our engineer's estimate. The other two were real close to the engineer's estimate this one was well below yeah this one uh, actually was the foreman at one time for b&b contracting when they were doing the concrete work so mm. we recommend approval we'll approval we'll approve. second motion abundance second by rux questions from anyone uh, all in favor of accepting uh, that recommendation then two hundred twenty thousand five hundred thirty five dollars say aye. 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 aye aye opposed no motion carries <clears throat> Uh, next, uh, Rich is uh, here to uh, talk to us about a professional services agreement. Rich, before you get started, take this opportunity. I've had the occasion over the last few weeks to uh, be around a couple of the fixed space operators out at the airport, 
and they couldn't say enough good things about your uh, early months here as our new airport manager. Just uh, uh, glowing comments uh, that I've gotten, and so uh, I appreciate uh, uh, what you've done there so far. Well, thank you. Uh, you're asking us to do what here? Uh, before you have a proposal for a professional services agreement between the city and uh, Helms and Associates for AIP 3-46-0001-41-2020. And that's for the design and reconstruction of the general aviation apron project and uh, asking for uh, approval to authorize the city manager uh, to sign the agreement uh, for that uh, professional services agreement. Who would you approve? Second. Motion or name, second by Remley. Questions, anyone? Uh, all in favor of doing that then say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. And the next item, we have four uh, payments to Helms and Associates. Why don't you go through all four and then we'll deal with them. Okay, the uh, first one is payment 14 and that's for the wildlife hazard assessment. We're at about 80 a little over 80 percent completed with that uh, these are some engineering or uh, uh, engineering administrative costs uh, for 44.79 and 15 cents uh, item two is uh, some final administrative costs on the passenger boarding bridge that we recently installed uh, item three is payment number seven for uh, AIP uh, <coughs> 39 is what we call it um, and that's for the master plan and uh, airport layout plan project. Um, that project actually is uh, in the fairly early beginning stages. So uh, with that, we've had some uh, meetings with uh, FBOs and we've had some meetings with some uh, two key uh, work groups that were selected. So going forward with that, we'll start having uh, pilot community meetings and we will eventually move into uh, neighboring landowners and interested public so they'll all, all have a chance to come and talk about what where they would like to see the airport in the next 20 years or so and then uh, item number four is payment number four for the taxiway helm uh, taxiway C uh, project we call that AIP 40 and that's to Helms and Associates and that is for some engineering um, administrative costs as well and we just had a meeting on this one um, last Friday morning and we've come up with a three-phase approach on um, the reconstruction of taxiway C so that it uh, try to keep the impact uh, to the community as aviation community as uh, small as possible so um, looking for approval to authorize the city manager to sign those payment requests moved Second. Second. motion business second by Slade Hansen questions on any of those four all payments to uh, Helms Carl? Councilmember Rucks? Aye. Olson? Aye. Lundsness? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Leeson? Aye. Motion carries. Rich, I see the next 10 days forecast, forecast for a high right at about freezing. That mean we're going to be de-icing every flight out of here for, for a few days? Uh, I hope not. We, mm -hmm. we had to put some de-icing fluid down uh, the other night, and uh, as soon as we did, a snow squall moved through and what happens then is there was so, so much snow came it was like two inches per hour but there was so much snow that it uh, really made a mess on the runway and we ended up using sand to get the flight out so sometimes we got to do what we got to do to get that that uh, those 50 people out of here so yeah it looks like it might be a challenge here in the next few days I think Thursday is going to be a real challenge yeah, so. So. All have right. you been having Thank trouble? You. Have you been having trouble with the de-icing equipment, Rich? No. Uh, we haven't on our part. We don't de-ice the aircraft. Though. Who does that? Delta. Uh, DGS is the contracted uh, folks by Delta. It's Delta Ground Handling Services. Is it, is that our equipment or their equipment? Their equipment. They need new equipment. They're <laughs> looking at that. They're actually looking <laughs> at replacing uh, one of their de-icing trucks, the oldest de-icing truck, with a brand new one, and then. Their primary would become. Their they should move that to Watertown. Don't don't put that on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, item G on our agenda. You've been provided with a uh, list of bills for payment. Entertain a motion to pay those. Moved. Moved. Second. Motion. Olson. Second by Rux. Questions on any of them? Carl. 
Council Member Remley? Aye. Ronan? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Olson? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Lynn? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I have two items this evening. Uh, being Rich is here, I will announce one of the items that we found out about last week. Uh, Sky West informed Rich and I last week that the city was eligible to attain marketing funds up to $20,000 per year to move the airport. Huh. Good deal. Mm. That's the first time I ever went to a conference and brought money back from the conference. <laughs> <laughs> Potential money back. Uh, second item. Uh, weather permitting, we hope to visit the city of Brookings to, to review their rental inspection program this Friday. Uh, we've been waiting for the new department <coughs> director to increase his comfort level for his operations because he started his new position only about four months ago. So we may have to delay and go a different date, but we've been having trouble trying to schedule a time period where it worked within his schedule because he's so busy because of him being new within his position. But we have not given up on, you know, doing the work to bring it to a, a later time. But in the same uh, respect, it probably helped us to have a slight delay because he had told us they've changed their ordinance from a year ago too, mm -hmm. where they actually went out and did analysis and compared their fees and their inspection program to other university colleges and communities. So we know it can be done. It depends on how much money you give them. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of money, you got, uh, how are we going to decide to spend that $20,000? Uh, who's going to decide uh, how that's <coughs> done? We've got a uh, uh, study that kind of shows our what they call a catchment area. And those are the people that are most likely, the communities that are most likely. There's about uh, 48 um, zip codes within that catchment area. So would, would, would that be an airport board function or would uh, to... Um, to actually, uh, one of the airport board members has um, offered to work with me kind of as a subcommittee. Okay. On, uh, development and okay, good. Uh, actually, when we spoke to Sky, uh, Sky West, they indicated that they would like for the city to take the lead on it because they said they would... They were hoping that the city would know where the best application would be for market conditions. So they said they didn't care whether it was radio. They didn't care whether it was TV. They didn't care whether it was the newspaper. They were willing to use, you know, various different options to help the city. But keep in mind, I said up to 20000 That doesn't guarantee. And I almost got the impression that we might be too late to get funds for 2019. And we might have to work on an application for 2020. Okay. Uh, we have an executive session on the agenda. Is uh, there anything else for the public session before we uh, recess to uh, executive? If not, I'd entertain a motion to do that. Move. Move. We'll go into executive session. Motion, Ronan, second.